What's up, beautiful people? So today I wanted to welcome you to the first ever episode of Conversations with Katie. Today we are going to be featuring branding photographer Katherine Schwingle as she shares her story of finding her path to passion and how she learned to embrace her authentic self. So without further ado, let's get to it. Can't hear you yet. I think you're on you. Oh, there we go. Awesome. Awesome. Hi, Katherine. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Oh, I'm fabulous. Especially now talking to you. I'm so excited. <laughs> Same here. Totally. Awesome. Awesome. So why don't you tell everyone a little bit about yourself and what you do? Cool. My name is Katherine Schwingle. Uh, I'm a branding photographer based out of Southern California and here in Orange County. And uh, I've been in the design industry basically since I was a teenager and went through design school, architecture school, did that whole thing, worked in interior design and furniture retail actually through my 20s and fell into the marketing department in my interior design firm and found out I love um, photographing and telling stories for small businesses and that eventually led me here to have having my own small business doing brand photography for uh, entrepreneurs and for larger companies who sell great products. That's amazing. I love that. So yeah. obviously sound passionate about the work you're doing. Um, how did you kind of find that work and get to it? Long path, I think. Yeah. Which I appreciate now because you don't realize it until after you've gone through all of those steps that all of those were necessary for you to get to this point. Yeah. Versus, oh, you saved so much time and got you here from there. That's not necessarily true, you know? Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think back. How did that actually happen? I actually was told by a, a high school counselor that you're good at math and you're really passionate about art. Why don't you think about architecture? That's the first time that I ever thought about that. And I was 17. I had no idea, but I thought, well, you, you know, you're an adult, you know, more than I do. Yeah. When, is that true? Let's, you know, pause for a second. Is that really true? It's your life, but whatever. 17 year old me had that thought. And Understandable. <laughs> right. And I just started, uh, internalizing that like I am good at this I am good at this that makes sense okay now I have a path to follow to do the next thing that I'm supposed to do and that did end up working out because I was always a good student it wasn't like I had to really apply myself to get to that next level and go to that um, major and apply to those schools and all of that and I will always vividly remember this. The very first week of architecture school, I walked into my first studio class and I had signed myself up for like the more advanced, like starting point class for freshman year because that's what I had done in high school. And I remember walking out of that and just feeling so nauseous and so like, this is not what I'm supposed to be doing. I just felt it in my stomach. I just knew it. Oh, I totally but I, right? And I had never, I never had had that feeling before. So I thought I'm just feeling sick. Like it's not that actual feeling. It's just, oh, you know, it's a little adjustment, whatever. But looking back, it's like, well, then why did you visit a career counselor your second year of college? Why did you keep reading about other careers? Why did you spend so much time in the graphic design department? Why did you make friends outside of architecture? Yeah, you know, like all of these things were telling me that this wasn't the right thing, but I was still feeding into this same story of, well, you made a commitment. You want to, you know, make your parents proud. You want to get a good job. You want to do all of these things, but totally ignoring all of the signs that were right there. And I think that's so valid too, because so many people, yeah. like, I, I truly believe that our body and our intuition is so wise in the fact that it's yeah. messages all the time about what feels right and what we know is not right. And I think it takes a lot of practice to really learn how to listen to that voice and listen to that feeling. Because so much times, it, and especially I've had this where 
for me, my intuition a lot of times will come in those feelings of sick, of even so much as making me physically sick because yep. you know, it really does speak volumes about, you know, what's going on inside you and kind of how that connects with what you're doing. Right. Totally. Right. And I so wish that I had had any kind of experience before that to even realize that's what it was because it took so long. It wasn't even, like I said, in the moment that I realized what that was, but it kept happening and it kept happening. And the more time I spent away from those classes, those different um, responsibilities, that lifted. And that's when I started to notice, wait a minute, you don't feel that way now. So why is that? Yeah, and I think it definitely takes time to understand those kind of hints. But I think it's really interesting that they were persistent because I think so much when you don't listen to the universe, when you don't listen to yourself, those yeah. things are kind of keep coming back and they're going to be little hints. Maybe at first it's a feeling, maybe next it's an observation that you're spending so much time in graphic arts or you're, yeah. you're making new friends here and there. But yeah. those hints are keep coming and they're definitely persistent and I think it's so valuable to listen and get in tune with those feelings and the same goes in the other direction I've noticed in the last few months that suddenly people that I'm studying from are connected to each other and there's no reason for me to have known that but I'm learning individually from them from books and courses or you know videos and all of these different things and those things start to connect and you think okay I'm in the right place and things keep suddenly coming out of the woodwork or people reach out that are so random that you know there's no reason why that should happen but it has okay. so anytime that happens to you good or bad always pay attention why is that happening right now absolutely i love that i love that yeah. but yeah tell me more this is awesome so you went from having this bad feeling about kind of engineering to how did the, you then make that decision to switch your path? I, I made the decision probably third year of college that I thought I couldn't start over and see something else. And I knew that an architecture degree from that school held some weight. Mm -hmm. And I also knew like, okay, I'm a smart enough kid. I know if I actually focus on what I want to do, I'll work my butt off to get further along there, right? So I decided third year, it's a five-year program. I stayed all the way through and I graduated. It was painful. Mm -hmm. I probably didn't enjoy myself as much as I should have, but I got through it and decided, you know what? I'm going to try interior design. That's a path that had always interested me and I took classes that were more about that to, to have like the reprieve from architecture structure and all that stuff I didn't really love and decided don't even try working at a firm. You're just gonna make it worse because you're just digging yourself deeper into the hole that you can't get out of. And um, at that time, a new West Elm store was actually opening back uh, in Orange County from home because I was going to school about four hours away and they were starting a home stylist program. And I thought, you know what, why not? Like, this is the time to try things, why not? And I ended up getting hired and ended up having a team of people I was leading within like two years of having that job. And the whole time having that imposter syndrome, of like, I don't know what I'm doing. I just graduated college, but okay, let's just go with that. <laughs> but you find your way, like you always find your way in those, in those moments. And I love that, I love that. Yeah, it just happens. Yeah, absolutely. And I love that idea of imposter syndrome because I think so many people face that, whether you're coming out of high school, coming out of college, or even older than that. I think a lot of people are fearful of leading teams and fearful of being put in leadership positions because yeah. they feel like they listen to that fear telling them that you're not prepared, you're not ready for this. Right. But, but then who's but then later on you think, well, who's to say that? Like, What does that mean to be ready? You're just yeah. making this up because it's new to you. It's not necessarily true. Absolutely. I love yeah. that. So that's, that started that path. And then I ended up working for a few other retailers and then deciding that, I don't know, how old was I? I think 27. I was ready to move to a firm and work in interiors in like an office setting rather than in a retail setting. And I ended up 
going to a firm that also had just opened their first boutique. So it was still the same situation, but a little bit more elevated. The retail side of the business was less important, let's say, than the firm side of the business. But with my experience, they put me into a lot more of the projects that were involved with the boutique. Mm -hmm. And in that, I was much more a part of their marketing department and taking pictures of all of the different furniture, the custom furniture that we made, and the little home decor items. And then uh, I was in charge of creating like a Christmas catalog for everything that was being sold seasonally and putting that together and the graphics that were involved with that. And that was literally the unlock. Wait a minute. I love doing this. Why am I not doing this? Even though I still love design and I will always love it in that sense. It's just not what I like doing all the time. Mm -hmm. So that was a totally unexpected thing that just came because I decided to move on to a new company. Yeah. And I think that's awesome. And it definitely like brings power to the idea of new beginnings and new action. Will yeah. Momentum because you never could have known and never could have found that path had you not taken another one. And right. I think that it takes courage to do that, but you know, with new opportunities will breed new opportunities with them and that, and it's just such, you grow in those uncomfortable places that, you know, you have to step out of your comfort zone and do something that like switching to another company or going to somewhere else. Um, yep. But it definitely sounds like that was exactly what you needed. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I, I think the one, the person who's responsible for like kind of recruiting me, I thank her all the time because I just know you hadn't been so adamant and I hadn't said yes to this. I would not be now where I am. And that goes with everything. It's so nice to be able to look back and say, literally there is a reason for everything. And if you're not where you want to be right now, you have past experience that you've been able to go from A to B and yeah. succeed. So it can happen again. It's just going through that journey and being okay with where you are in that moment. I love that. That's definitely, oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. So if you were to kind of give advice to someone who um, is struggling to find their path, struggling to kind of find that thing that lights their soul on fire, what, what advice would you give to them? Ooh. Don't stay in your own head too much and talk to people that don't seem like they may be able to give you anything because you just never know where someone's been, what they've done, what they're planning on dreaming on doing. All of those different conversations lead you to new insight and ideas that you may never have even considered for yourself. And I've definitely found that obviously through my entire life, but just even recently trying to refine this business and who you talk to and what people need are things you can't really decipher for yourself. Like, you know what you need as a person, but what, what do other people need from you as a potential business owner or as a potential employee, as a friend? Yeah. Like all of those things are really important and you don't get those kind of insights if you're not willing to really listen to people and see what they need. Yeah. I love how you mentioned kind of this part about being a good friend in that respect and how it's kind of correlated to adding value to another customer because I think mm -hmm. there's so many similarities between, you know, adding value to a relationship and, you know, a relationship that is more business oriented. It's so yeah. there's so many core similarities between being a good friend and being a good business partner. Right. And hold up both relationships as really important and take the time to listen and see how you can be of, you know, the best value to them. I think that's incredibly valuable for everyone involved. I agree. It's, I've never been one to play like the business person and then play the, the good friend BFF. Like you're going to get me no matter what. And you know, I might have more technical knowledge on the business side, but it's that's basically it. You're going to get the same person no matter what. And it's just easier. Why do you want to have the mask here and, you know, let it all hang out here. Obviously you can be a little bit more ratchet with your friends if you want to be, but still you're going to get the same person no matter what. And it just makes your life way more simple. And you don't have to worry about, well, who do they know me as? Who do they recognize as being professional? No, 
if you don't jive with me, period, then you don't jive with me. So maybe I don't want to do business with you. Maybe I don't really want to be your friend. There's both same thing. I love that because I think a lot of people have this misconception that they have to put on a mask in a friendship or in like a business. Mm -hmm. And I think they have to be someone different to be recognized. And I think you really will start to attract your people both in business and in real life when you bring your authentic self to both environments. Mm -hmm. And that's in everything. It's, it's really just owning who you are in every sense of that word. The, the most shallow example is me deciding that like, I'm not wearing business suits. I'm not wearing, you know, anything considered like a professional outfit. I have always been super casual and I've had environments where I was required to wear all black and I had to be wearing heels all the time and I had to be wearing blazers and that's fine. And I could, I played that mask up and that outfit up, no problem, but that's just not me. And it doesn't matter to me. Yeah. The relationship that I get with you and the trust that you have in me as a client and the fun that we have and the strategy that we can come up with together, that's all super important to me. And if you don't care what I'm wearing, I'm going to be myself. And same for you. If you want to be photographed in a t-shirt and that's your, like, that's who you are and that's what your brand is. Great. If you're a power suit person, awesome. Let's make that happen. It doesn't matter to me. It's just being who you are and that's it. Yeah, I love that. And I think that's so powerful. And it also shows that you have the self-awareness to know what you value and know who you are and mm -hmm. bring that forward. And I think that that point of self-awareness is such a powerful one to be off our authentic selves is to know our authentic selves and really right. Acted with that person and know, hey, this is important to me or this isn't, and I'm going to show what's important to me with how I interact with others and how I how I carry myself in every respect of the term. Right. It's the the best thing you can do for yourself and for anyone is to have the confidence to be exactly who you are and not be apologetic about that ever. Yeah. And I think that what is so powerful about that is when you're yourself, when you're your true, authentic, unapologetic self it makes space for other people to be their own self and to be uh, that I will tell you that for a fact, I've noticed that over the last year that I've been so me like to like, I, I've never been so open and the things people share with you when you're like, that is crazy. Like strangers. It's insane. What people tell you it's hilarious. Oh, it people you gain that trust and you gain that confidence where people feel like they can trust you enough to show the real them. And that yeah. is a beautiful way to connect with people and a beautiful way to connect with yourself. Yeah. Oh, so true. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so good. It's like we're in church right now. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. So yeah, let me think if I have any other big questions for you. Yeah. I appreciate you coming on here and talking with me and um, of course. I'm sure that I know anyone who watches this is going to get a huge amount of value out of it out of your story and your wisdom so I really appreciate that of course thanks for having me on that's that's all that's all of these conversations ever are if one person can hear that and know oh, I don't have to do this for my parents really I don't have to live this life I can actually like, think about what I want to do yes because you, it's your life you know, God forbid it's later on and they're not around, then what? Like, who are you doing this for? You know? I love that. I love that. that is so much of what I'm trying to kind of push into the world and um, support. But I really love to see people who are living out their dream, living out their purpose. And that, that just brightens my day. So. Yes. And just to be sure that I'm saying the full truth, that doesn't mean that there aren't challenges to that. And you have to be prepared for the things that don't go your way in the pursuit of the higher purpose for you. Like, for example, you, I mean, I haven't told you this and where I am right now, but I made the decision to move back in with my parents after 12 years of not living with them because saving that money and getting the business in a good place to me was more important than having an apartment and having my own space because I can do this temporarily to build the future for myself that I want, but that doesn't come at huge, you know, sacrifice of independence and 
having to share space with people you haven't shared space with in a long time, uh, sharing kitchen, sharing the fridge again, like all this stuff is all totally different, but sometimes you have to do it. If you really love something, those sacrifices don't feel as huge as they might seem out of context, like as just, oh, I moved back in with my parents. Like that's a different, different scenario. Yeah, because it's very different when you're moving back in as a sacrifice to pursue the life of your dreams rather yeah. you know, an alternative. And I think that that's so powerful to really think about the fact that, you know, when you're committed to a life that's aligned with your purpose, there are sacrifices. And that doesn't mean that little challenges go away or that the path is going to be any easier. But I think right. it makes the path so much more fun. And oh, totally. That all of those sacrifices are contributing to something bigger and sure yep. something that inspires you and I think that changes the framework of what challenges are because you know everyone is supporting the person you want to be and the reason you're put on this earth mm -hmm. absolutely right uh, this, the things that you thought were so so big are so trivial when that's where you're operating from yeah. I want to be able to help more people live out their dreams and supporting them in that through marketing and photography and getting them to show up themselves online. That's not a small thing. And you can think that, you know, social media is dumb. Social media is not worth it and all these people, but you know what, if you get people to connect with you and doing that allows you to have a life that you really want, that's, that's it. It's so simple and people make it so convoluted and that's really all it is. Yeah, absolutely. I love yeah. it. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. <laughs> So I was wondering if you had, as we're kind of wrapping things up, if you had anything else that you wanted to share, go to chats or just kind of share with the audience that you've learned or just any last words. Oh, get uncomfortable. I, I, anyone who ever asked me that question, I always say get uncomfortable, whatever that means for you. If you hate going to events, if you're not an extrovert, make yourself do it. If you want to try something that you never tried before and you're going to look an idiot, do it because that's where the growth is. And that's where you realize what you're truly capable of. And you, re you really can't get there unless you take action and do something that makes you uncomfortable. That's really, really, really critically important as your growth as a person, but also if you have a business, the same thing, you have to try new things and get uncomfortable with where things are moving. And you never know what will come from that. You just never know. I love that. Thank you so much. I really appreciated this. And I really look forward to connecting with you again. Yeah, absolutely. I'm so proud. I, like I told you in your message, I'm so proud of you and what you're already doing at such a young age. I would have loved to have been your friend at 17. <laughs> I appreciate that. And you please let me know if there's any way that I can support you or um, continue your mission because I think it's a beautiful one and um, I'd love to be able to partner with you or support you in whatever way I can. Absolutely yeah we'll, we'll stay in touch on social always. Awesome thank you so much I really appreciate it. Thanks Katie have a good day. So that's it for the first episode of Conversations with Katie. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe down below and leave some comments about what you think and what you want to see more of. Bye!